A motorized scooter is a souped-up version of an ordinary scooter. Instead of propelling the wheels by pushing off the ground with one leg, an engine does most of the work. Some motorized scooters are kids' toys, but others are sturdy vehicles suitable for commuting, utility, and recreation. This motorized scooter has wheels large enough and tires wide enough to drive on any surface, even off-road. The manufacturer contracts this factory to make the frame components. Machines cut hollow steel tubes to the required length. Then workers program an automated bending machine to bend each one to the required shape. They make five tubular frame parts per scooter, strictly following the technical drawings supplied by the manufacturer. The scooter company subcontracts the frame assembly to another factory. There, a welder mounts the components on a jig, which positions them correctly while he welds them together. The non-tubular flat frame parts are prepared in-house, cut from sheet steel by a computer-guided laser cutter. These flat crossbars support the footboard on which the rider stands. This flat plate supports the battery, and these arms support the rear wheel and motor. After applying a coat of anti-corrosion paint, workers install the side reflectors and the knob that secures the battery. The paint is baked on for maximum durability. The scooter manufacturer subcontracts the wheel rims to another factory that specializes in high-precision metal spinning. A worker there mounts an aluminum disc onto a computer-guided lathe, positioning it right next to a rim-shaped steel mold. Two rollers push and stretch the disc over the mold, forming the aluminum to the rim shape. Another worker mounts the rim on a manual spinning lathe to finish the shaping. First, with a cutting knife, he trims the edge. After lubricating the edge with soap, he uses a forming bar to turn it inward to form a lip. Then, with a forming roller, he stretches the lip to shape a flange. Back at the scooter factory, a worker begins installing the vehicle's silent electric motor. Its cable will plug into the electronic module that runs the motor, accelerator, and battery. The motor is actually located inside the hub of the rear wheel. This mounting ring holds it in place. He installs a brake disc on top of the motor and another on the front wheel. A mechanical cable connects each handlebar brake lever to the brake calipers. When the driver pulls the levers, the brake calipers clamp the discs to the wheels, stopping rotation. Now, the final assembly. Workers bolt the rear wheel to the frame support arms. They insert the height-adjustable fork made of steel and aluminum into the steering column. Next, the worker installs the handlebars, which have a thumb-operated accelerator throttle, an LCD monitor, and two handbrakes, each with a mechanical cable for the calipers. Each handbrake also has one electrical cable. He connects the throttle line and the electrical cables to the monitor. Then he connects the monitor to the controller. When the rider brakes, the controller also cuts power to the motor, which allows the scooter's 48-volt lithium-ion battery to regenerate. This screw knob holds the battery securely against the battery support plate. He connects the battery to the controller, then the mechanical cable from one handbrake lever to the front brake calipers, and from the other handbrake lever to the rear calipers. Charging the battery takes four hours when plugged into a regular household outlet, and a full charge lasts 31 to 37 miles. The scooter can climb an 11% incline and reach a top speed of 20 miles per hour.